With this tutorial I'll cover how to program your weapons including single fire for rocket pods, cluster and standard bombs. Let's get started by going over the source page found on the tactical menu. The stores page shows a wing form with weapons loaded on it. You can see the weapon code and above the quantity you have on that selected pylon. The quantity of gun rounds remaining is shown above the wing form in the center and the arm or safe or simulation mode is shown below. Under that we have the currently selected weapons release program and its parameters. On the top row we can see the weapons codes, push the on screen button above it to select that weapon you can load up to five different weapon types at once. Starting on the top left, we have the mode selection. This allows you to pick the delivery method from auto, also known as continuously computed release point, used for level, loft, and sometimes dive bombing. Typically, you will want to use this with precision guided weapons. FD, or flight director, currently not implemented. CCIP, Continuously computed impact point, generally used for dive bombing and targets of opportunity. MAN, manual release mode. This is used as a backup mode using a depressed reticule and a healthy dose of maths and strict flying. You will probably never need to use this mode. Below the delivery modes, we've got the mechanical fuse settings. OFF to disable all mechanical fuses, NOSE to only arm the nose fuse and TAIL to only arm the tail fuse. NT will allow you to arm both fuses. Generally, you will want to use tail fuse for hard target penetration or nose fuse for instant on softer targets. On cluster bomb mechanical fuses you have PRY. I believe this is the primary fuse, however I have not been able to find any information on its operation. VT, this is for a proximity or variable time delay fuse most commonly used for setting the airburst altitude on cluster munitions. E-fuse, electronic fuse. Off to disable them. VT, same as before, only electronically timed. INST, for instantaneous detonation fusing. Delay 1, which has a delay of 0.015 seconds. Delay 2, delaying for 0.1 seconds. Again, these relate to if you want the bomb to start penetrating its target before detonation. You may wish to set the fuses for both mechanical and electronic, often used as a backup in the case of failure of the other. Be aware that if you set an invalid fusing, such as for example VT on both mechanical and electronic, you will see your weapon selection box crossed out. This is also true if you select a setting your armament cannot accept, such as attempting to use a tail fusing on a Mark 82 Snake Eye, which has a retarding device rather than a tail fuse. Drag. This setting is exclusive for weapons with retardation systems, such as the Mark 82 Snake Eye. Setting it to FF will disable the drag fins on the bomb. Setting it to RET will enable the drag fins, slowing the bomb down after release. High drag munitions are typically used to allow you to drop bombs from low altitude safely. HT. This configures the height of burst setting for air burst weapons such as the Mark 20 cluster bomb. Pressing this will cycle the burst height in feet ranging from 300 to 3000 feet. The higher the burst height, the larger the area the cluster munitions will cover. Be aware that spreading your clusters over a wider area will reduce the damage it will inflict to a single given target, reducing the probability of a kill. A dud cue will appear on the HUD if you are below the air burst height or otherwise out of parameters for your fusing setting. This is a warning that your weapon will not be able to operate correctly if released. To correct this, adjust your parameters or re-attack from a higher altitude. Prog. This will allow you to cycle your weapon's programs, 5R stored. As you make changes to the profile, it is automatically saved. You can then cycle to another program and set it to a different release method, for example. You could configure program 1 for retarded snake eyes and then program 2 for freefall snake eyes, allowing you to quickly change between settings. Tone. When pressed, this cycles a box tone 1 and tone 2 then returns to the unboxed tone. When boxed, it'll play a tone over your radio when the pickle or weapons release button is pressed. The data button is currently not functional. 
With the master arm off, the sim option appears. This enables training simulation mode where all weapon symbology will function as normal, allowing you to run through the process of releasing weapons and attacking. However, the release of the weapon itself is inhibited. UFC. This enables the upfront controller settings for your weapons release program. You can press the corresponding button and enter a value, then press enter to change it. This gives you the following options. Quantity QTY. This is the total number of bombs to release. You will have to hold the weapons release button until all bombs are released, otherwise the program will be interrupted or stores can become hung. Molt. Multiples of bombs to be released. This is how many bombs you wish to have dropped in each salvo. Int or interval. This is the distance between each salvo of bombs you drop. In feet, up to 1000 feet may be set. When in manual mode, this sets a millisecond delay. So for example, if you set the quantity to 10, multiple to 1, and interval to 1000, you will drop 10 bombs individually with 1000 foot spacing. Setting quantity to 10, multiple to 2, and interval to 800, you will do 5 drops of 2 bombs 800 feet apart each. And finally, quantity 10, multiple 5, and interval 1000, will perform 2 drops of 5 bombs 1000 feet apart. After that we have the step button. This will cycle which pylon of the currently selected weapon will drop from first. This is useful if you wish to drop from a specific pylon to help maintain symmetry. Gun. This enables the gun for operation. If pressed whilst a weapon is already selected on the top row, the hot gun mode is enabled. This will show you a bore sighted gun cross on the HUD. Pulling the trigger will allow you to fire the gun, whilst weapons release will allow you to fire your selected weapon. If you press the gun button with no other weapon selected, you will enable the CCIP gun sight on the HUD for more accurate strafing runs. With this selection you also have additional gun programming options, that being CCIP or MAN manual delivery modes. You can also select the M50 or PGU round type depending on what's been loaded onto your aircraft. This affects the CCIP calculation. Leave this on PGU unless you've loaded M50 rounds, currently not implemented. The high or low setting this is used to select either high fire rate or low fire rate, 6,000 rounds per minute or 4,000 rounds per minute respectively. For rockets, we can select CCIP or manual delivery modes. You can then select either SGL, single or SAL, salvo release modes. In single, you will fire rockets from a single pod. In salvo mode, your rocket pods will fire in symmetrical pairs. Below that, we have the motor setting. Here you tell the computer what type of motor is loaded on your rockets for impact calculations, either the M4 or the M66 motor. You can leave this on the default as the different rocket motors are not currently implemented. Rocket pods come in two types, single fire or ripple fire pods. Single fire pods will fire a single rocket per press of the weapons release switch. Ripple fire pods will fire the entire pod in one go from one press of the weapons release switch. You can see which mode your rocket pod is in in the weapons selection. An R denoting ripple and an S for single fire. Unfortunately you cannot select which fire mode your pod uses in flight and we are currently limited to being able to only select this in the editor. In multiplayer this means you are limited to whatever the mission creator has set. This is achieved by selecting the aircraft in question, selecting the additional properties tab found under the airplane group box. You can then select from the drop down menus which rocket mode you wish to use for either the outboard or inboard pylons. In single player however you can use the mission planning button on the briefing screen prior to starting to enter the editor and edit your flight. Hopefully in the future we will see the ability to either select the mode via loadout or with the ground crew radio commands. This concludes all the basic programming options for unguided weapons on the Hornet. Take care.